Welcome to my home lab. In this video, we install community edition of TrueNAS. We start the video on the website from TrueNAS. You see here, get TrueNAS and download TrueNAS community edition. You click on it and you have the website from TrueNAS community edition. Download it, click on it. You have to log in with Google or Headcop or give you email. You can also do no thanks. I have already signed up. Click on it. And you have a couple of options. Through NAS 25.04.1. Current stable version. It's this one we're going to install. Click on it. And you see we are downloading it. We put the ISO from TrueNAS on a USB stick. We use Rufus. You can download it here, here, 4.9 or Edson. Also here, that cookies. You can download it. You see it here. We have it for Windows, Mac, and Linux. In the meantime, the download is finished. And we can put it on our USB stick. We have Rufus, this one here, or Edson, this one. Here, you put a USB stick in the computer. You select True NAS, MBR, OK, all OK. You do start. But here, you put right in dd image mode you have to select this one okay and then you do here okay all data will be destroyed okay important the drive contains multiple partition this may include partitions volumes that are listed or even visible for windows you should wish to proceed Yes, okay. See, it's writing. I'm going to speed up the video and come back when it's finished. Okay, our USB stick is ready. The second possibility is Etcher. Again, flash from file. We click on it. Through NAS. Okay. Select the target. We only have one. This one here. Select one and flash. The USB stick is ready and we can continue. If you want to do that, you only have to use Etzel or Rufus, not both. For me, I want to show you both possibilities. Now we put the USB stick in the server and start it up. I have started up the computer from the USB and install TrueNAS. I speed up the process. I come back when the computer is started up. You have TrueNAS installation. You can do enter. And we are at the setup. You see, we have install and upgrade, shell, reboot, and shut down the system. We're going to do install and upgrade. OK. Here we select the hard drive. I have one NVMe 0 and 1, one NVMe 1 and 1, and a normal hard disk. I want to install it on the first NVMe. On the spacebar, I select it and OK. Erase all partitions, that's okay, yes. Administrative user. You see here, the user will be true NAS admin. You remember that for later. Okay. And we give it a password. Confirm. And okay. Now true NAS has been installing. 
Again, I speed up the video and come back when it's finished. The installation is complete. We have to reboot, but first I remove the USB stick. Remove it and OK. We are at the window install upgrade, shell, reboot and sit down. Now we go to reboot and click on it. OK. We select through NAS, OK, enter, and wait again. Through NAS is now started up, and as you can see, we have a web interface. It's 192.168.129.32. We can remove the keyboard, the mouse, and the monitor, and do the rest of the installation on the browser. See you in a minute. We are back on our Windows PC. Open a new tab and do 192.168.129.32. Enter. And voila, we are inside. If you remember from the first from the video, it, the Username is through NAS admin and the password login. Et voilà, we are inside. First, we have to go to the configuration system general settings. We go to localization, as you can see, we have things that are not right. Settings. Language English, it's okay. Keyboard, because I live in Belgium, it's not English. I have to change it. See it here, Belgium, okay. Time zone, Europe. Brussels, date format, time format, it's okay for me. Save it. The next step is to create a new user. We go to credentials, users. We have root and true NAS admin. The one we are logged in with, you see it here. We can do add, full name, username, the first name, password, confirm the password. Okay, go down. Here you can put groups, built in administrator. Here you can, if you want, do SSH, you can do it here and save it. Now go to our user, log out, and Log in again with the new user. Log in. Et voilà, the new user is working. Now we go back to the dashboard. As you can see, we have system information. You can also check for updates, but we are update. Okay, no updates available. You see it here. You have the CPU, memory. Storage, backups, the network, and some help. You can create a pool. Do it here, or here, not matter. You give it a name. Through NAS pool one. Encryption, if you want. Next. Layout. Stripe is on disk alone. You have mirror and a couple of rates. I do Stripe. The disk size. I use the NVMe. Okay. And do save and go to review. Create pool. You see it here. Stripe is not 
very good, but for testing it's okay. Create pool. Confirm. Continue. And our pool is created. You see, we have one pool. True NAS pool one. Usage health. We go back to create another pool. Create pool. A name. True NAS. Pool two. Next. Layout. Try it again. The other disk. It's automatically built here. And save and go review to review. Okay. It's okay. Create pool. Okay. Confirm. Continue. As you can see, we have two pools now. Through NAS pool one here. And through NAS pool two here. Next, we go to data sets. And you see, we have two data sets through NAS pool one and through NAS pool two. Have space management, data protection, roles, permissions from both. Next is shares. You can create a window SMB share. Add. Go here to mount. Click on it and select one of the two. Data sets. Select the first one, through NAS pool one. If you want, you can change that. Default share parameters, description, and save it. Okay. Confirm. Continue. You have to start SMB service. If you want a Windows PC, you can see the share. You have to start it. Start, enable this, start it, wait a minute, and it's running. Now we can go to our Windows PC and see if we have the share. I open the Explorer and you see we have through NAS. If I want to open it, we need to log in with the username of through NAS. So, first name and the password. Okay. Et voilà. True NAS pool one. You can open it. Of course, it's empty, but you can use it. I want to show you one more thing. We go back to True NAS system and advanced settings. Go down. You see here access. Session timeout, five minutes. For some people, that's not enough. You can configure it and, example, do it one hour. Save it. Et voilà. The session timeout is now one hour. We are at the end of this video. I hope you liked it. Don't forget to subscribe and give a thumbs up. Thank you very much and see you later.